Hey, it is an absolutely beautiful Sunday morning. It can't be any nicer than it is right now. The sun is coming up. The ocean's nice and calm behind me. Things are changing out on the water, and we've got it all for you. Coming up next on The Morning Briefing. Hey, welcome back everybody. It's always great to be with you. Things are changing out there on the water. We're going to cover that here in Southern California, Northern Baja, and we're going to get into lots more. By the way, those of you who were on board our trip on the Pride just the other day, I want to thank you all for being there, but that video should be ready by Monday. I'm shooting for this afternoon. We'll see what we can do, but we'll have a new video that will include San Nicolas Island, some daytime bluefin tuna fishing, some nighttime bluefin tuna fishing. We'll have it all for you on our next video, which is coming up really, really soon. Well, it is great to be with you here on this lovely morning in Southern California from Surfside, California to be exact. Surfers are getting out on the water. There's a few surf fishing guys up this way. And of course, many of the boats have already started catching fish. So let me start you down in Ensenada, where, by the way, let's make a weather little statement now. We're going to have some wind here over the course of the next week, depending upon where you find yourself. In the Channel Islands, it's going to go from being very, very nice and fishable to a little bit windy. LA Orange County area is going to get a little breezy also. Even down San Diego and down into northern Baja, they're going to have a little bit of wind off and on. So keep your eyes on that because if we're looking for kelp patties, it is way more difficult to find one when you have that wind and it's a little more uncomfortable to say the least. So we're just keeping our eyes on all of that right now. Down there, across the border, our guys on the Pongeros who does uh, do such a great job out of Ensenada. They have been catching good Dorado here recently. If you find the right kelp, man, the Dorado bite has been excellent over the course of the past 48 hours or so. It really has been good. And that is evidence that this thing is far from over. They continue to catch fish in the 8 to 12 pound class with some even bigger than that. Remember how fast Dorado grow. A two-year-old Dorado can be 40 pounds, 50 pounds. In fact, they're at the end of their lifespan at two years. Yeah, many will live to four years old, but many perish at two years old. So they have a very quick lifespan and they grow super, super fast. So the longer they hang around and munch out on bait, the bigger they're gonna get. So that is good news, that bite continuing. We'll watch that wind down there. Now in terms of other species, there's been some marlin hanging around down there and there has been some yellowfin tuna, but that's either kind of being evasive right now, can't find it, or it's out of the picture. So we'll just have to see how this all plays out in the coming days. Remember Arnie Man, great guy to go fishing with. You can find him on Facebook. Diego Nuno, that is Costa Baja Sport Fishing. And my dear friend Albert Ponce, his wife Crystal, they love to fish with blackfin down there. So you can take those guys to the bank if you want to cross the border and do some fishing in that neck of the woods. All right, let's jump back over here into Gringolandia. And here, out of San Diego, we are catching good amounts of Dorado. I had a nice conversation with my friend Sean Hartigan, who runs the Mission Bell out of Point Loma Sword Fishing. And Sean said, hey, these kelps are holding pretty darn good here. And these are guys that are leaving in the morning and then fishing until the evening, coming home in the evening. Incidentally, Mission Bell, I think they just need a handful of more people for to be a go on Tuesday. So give Point Loma Sword Fishing a call and jump on the Mission Bell and say hi to Sean for me. He is really a great captain, a great friend, and he always gives you 100 and 10 percent no doubt about it some of the scores down that way condor limits of dorado nine yellowfin tuna 
Daiwa Pacific limits of Dorado. Mission Bell, two days in a row, limits of Dorado. The San Diego, 22 guys. They had limits of Dorado and a black skipjack to go along with it. Grande limits of Dorado, Oceanside 95 limits of Dorado. Man, they are chewing down there and they're biting the 30, 40 pound fluorocarbon really, really well with a 2-0 hook and a fly line bait has been the way to go. Now, I'm not telling you to just go with the heavy tackle. Bring a rod with 20 pound. You know, this all can switch overnight or you just find a kelp that doesn't want to bite that well. And that's when you have to go to the lighter line, go to a smaller hook and choose a good hot bait. That will do it for you for sure. Remember, we love Opsin fluorocarbon. That's www.opsinusa.com. Put in FA at checkout. Greg Brand will send you a love note along with a free gift. So some pretty darn good Dorado fishing going on down there in the northern Baja region for the San Diego based boats. Most of them are going south of the border right now. Those are Mexican limits of Dorado, two fish. When they cross into the U.S., it's 10 fish limits, but the fishing's been better south of the border here recently. Now, where, oh, where did that yellowfin tuna go? Uh, it might have just given us a slip for a little while. Could be entirely out of the picture and sliding back down the Baja Peninsula, but that warm water Dorado seems to be really comfortable. So I imagine that we'll get back on that yellowfin here pretty soon. Maybe it's this wind that could have it uh, a little bit more difficult to locate. Not exactly sure what it is, but those scores have gone down, plummeting here recently, and hopefully they'll get back into that steady bite. That fish was, a lot of it was, I want to say 6 to 10 pounds, some of it up to 50, 60 pounds. So again, that variety of tackle. Pretty safe to be fishing that 25-pound fluorocarbon with a 2-0 hook and a fly line bait. And anything with chrome in it, those Daiwa's Akana lures, are great to catch yellowfin tuna. So something with chrome in it, that's what I like when I'm fishing YFT. And when you slide up on that foamer and you see all of that fish on the surface, the really temptation is to toss it out and wind it fast, sink it, let it sink. You'll get bit on the sink, number one. And secondly, you're just seeing a little bit of that body of fish on the surface. There's way more fish down below. So if you sink it down and then retrieve it, you'll come through more fish and hence get more bites. So keep that in mind and hopefully that yellowfin will get back in the picture. But for now, real steady, good Dorado fishing. It's really quite excellent fishing going on down there in that neck of the woods. We catch you up to the LA Orange County area and we can even talk Channel Islands because they had their wax at some Dorado. Just a few days ago, the Aloha Spirit had over a hundred Dorado. Pretty mind-boggling stuff that has been going on. But it is way more scratchy right now for Dorado around Catalina Island, east of the island, in between San Clemente Island and Cat. You'll get occasional okay scores, but it has become way more difficult. Now, is that a temporary lull? Could very well be. I'm not writing this thing off for anything because sometimes you'll have a windier, breezier situation. It pushes it down. Then you get back to lovely fall weather like we're supposed to be having. We're not supposed to be having all this wind. You'll get back to that. You'll get a little solar warming and boom, those fish are back on the bite again. But for right now, it has been way more difficult. Sport King picked at the fish at Catalina Island after giving it a look for Dorado. The Enterprise had a handful of fish pursuit and the rest of the guys are still out looking around, but it has become more difficult. But I mean, you look at the pursuit and it was only a couple days ago where they had a great tuna bite and Dorado fishing. So do not write this off. Right now, at this present time, it's very scratchy and very difficult. And you definitely, 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 in addition to having the heavy line in case you run into bluefin and yellowfin like the pursuit did, you want to have some lighter stuff, some 20 pound, even 15 pound fluoro, and definitely smaller hooks. And always, of course, choosing a good hot bait. And if that bait, the one that you thought was the best bait, isn't getting a bite in a few minutes, then something's wrong. I don't know what it is, but wind it in, change it, and get a new bait out there. The quicker you do it, the better off you'll be. All right, so a, little scra a lot more scratchy here in the LA Orange County area. We'll continue to watch that. And most of the Channel Island boats now are fishing 
inshore or the islands right now. All right, let's talk islands right now and go south of the border. Todos Santos has some decent yellowtail action going on there. Coronado Islands down there out of San Diego, or it's in Mexican waters, but a stone's throw from SD, Point Loma, and they still have some good yellowtail fishing going on in that neck of the woods. Now, San Clemente Island, whoa, it's really starting to bite, and there's some big grade yellows. There's also a good yellow bite going on out on Tanner Bank. There is some really good fishing going on. I mean, the grade of the fish is spectacular, 15 to 30 pounds, somewhere in that range. You definitely have to have some heavy tackle, nothing less than 40 on that grade of fish. Some guys are getting bit on the dropper loop on 60 and a big old 5-0 hook. So if you're jumping on board the Freedom or the Thunderbird or one of those boats, Fury, that are focusing on SCI or Tanner Bank, you want to go tackled up. It is so very important. And we're talking really big time scores really excellent scores the freedom 75 plus on those big yellowtail tino valentine says it makes all the difference in the world if you get tackled up and fish the heavy it makes a huge difference thunderbird big day out there with 80 plus on the big yellows pushing up toward 100 fish so the scores have been remarkable they're big fish they're biting and hopefully this wind will not shut it down doesn't look like it's going to get up over 20 knots. So I think it's going to stay down below that, and we should be okay. We'll watch it, see where we go from here. But the admonition from Friedman Adventures is you definitely want to bring some heavy line with you if you're fishing in that neck of the woods. San Nicolas Island, we had a lot of fun there on the Pride, catching sheep there. We had a couple of white sea bass, three as a matter of fact, and also some big calico bass and plenty of rockfish. And then Channel Islands, once again, they're back to a lot of rockfish with still the occasional sea bass flurry and still the occasional big halibut. You can take advantage of that. So watch the weather. It's going to go from really windy to not so windy up there over the course of the next five days or so. And those are forecasts, so they are subject to change. Along the coast, we've had some big yellows down there out of sea force sport fishing recently on the half day boats good calico bass fishing and by that i mean the action in terms of keepers not all that great but we see some of that in the point loma area up around dana and certainly up there in redondo and marina del rey they've had their share of bass and up in the channel islands also little pops of bass here and there and then the surf fishing bite as you well know it's been okay for the fall you know there's been some corvina here in the shallows and when you're fishing corvina i mean if you can see where those waves are breaking those corvina sometimes are right in front of those waves or just behind i mean they're in water that's that deep sometimes you'll see halibut in that short water so again a natural bait for the corvina light line like six eight pound something like a sand crab or a ghost shrimp or a sandworm all work really really well and this kind of weather is tailor-made for it. And speaking of Corvina, you know, we're fishing high and low tides all the time. Daybreak is a magical time, and I don't care what the tide's doing, high, low, in between, it's a really good time. A little bit of yellowfin croaker around, and also the occasional nice halibut out of the surf. Nothing wrong with that. It's a glorious, glorious morning, and I hope you are having a lovely Sunday morning with a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, or whatever it is you have a drink of this morning. As always, we thank you very, very much for spending a little bit of your day with us here on the Morning Briefing. It's always great to see you here. All right, uh, Pride video coming out hopefully later today. Um, we will keep you apprised of any other trips that we have coming up. And of course, I send my thanks to you for all the support you've given Freeman Adventures getting awfully close to 1 million views now, 5,000 subscribers, great stuff. Hey, the great legendary Bruce Smith, we are hearing so many good things about the podcast that I did live with him on board the Pride. We got interrupted by a bluefin tuna bite. That was pretty darn fun. So check Bruce out. Super nice guy. Got so many great adventures. Kick back with another cup of coffee and enjoy it here this morning. Bruce Smith. What a great podcast because he's a super great guy. All right, you got all my thanks. Have a great Sunday. 
and I hope to see you really, really soon. <laughs>